Hey guys, it's me again. It's still the same day, as you can see from my last vlog, but I got so animated and I was talking about my dental experience. Here I am having my overnight oats. If you haven't made them yet, you need to. And <laughs> this also might make you laugh because of the dental work I've had. I can't really yet open it. Just last night, I have. it hasn't even been 24 hours since I've had two root canals, so. <laughs> it still is a little... I'm having a little trouble opening my mouth all that wide. So, I feel like maybe giving you guys some <laughs> memorable clips from my double root canal experience last night. I kept, you know, like I said in my last video, I have put off going to the dentist for years and years. And, and what happens when you avoid things like that, people, again, what I'm about to say is going back to... This is this vault of topics. Maybe this will help me stay on track. This is going back to figuring stuff out about yourself and then attacking it head on. Because when you figure out why you're not doing something, why you haven't done something, and what the, the reason behind it is, it's usually fear of something, doubt in yourself or your abilities. It, it usually tends to be one of those two things. And I don't know about you, I'm not going to let fear and doubt get in my way because one of the things I know <clears throat> in founding my own company, quitting my job and going out on, you know, leaving that comfort zone and going out and doing something I never thought I would do ever, 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 ever. It was never anybody that knows has known me my whole life. Never, ever heard me say, I'm going to own my own business. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to build a company, blah, blah, blah. Never. Why? Because I doubted myself. Why? Because realistically, if I ever thought about it, I never ever, I might have had an idea, but I never ever just quit my job and pursued it because I didn't believe in myself. And the more that you start to figure that stuff out about yourself and how you're limiting yourself, because really, you have the ability to do so much more than you think. I didn't think I could run. That was in my mind. Um, I didn't think I could found a company and build a company that was successful. Now, caveat, yes, a ton of people start their own business and fail. I have been very blessed. I don't want to make it sound as simple as, oh, well, just do your thing and everything's going to be great. No, but you know what? When I quit my job, I looked at worst case scenario and I knew that there was a possibility that I would quit my job, burn through all my savings, which I really didn't have a lot, um, and, and be a massive failure and that there would be a lot of people out there going, <laughs> I knew she'd be back asking for a job. Um, and it sure feels good to be a kick-ass success. And I can say that now because we've busted our tail for two years and I'm very proud of the work that we've done. But yes, you can, you can go out on a limb and you can fail, but then you learn from that. And then I think a lot of people that have done it and done it right would, would just say, okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna do something bigger and different and better and learn from my mistakes. <clears throat> so anyway, the thing about the dentist was typical represent a representation to me of conquering yet another fear, yet another huge thing that I had let blow up out into this huge mountain, which it really is a simple thing. And you can take this concept of me being scared to go to the dentist and apply it to so many things in your life. Some of you guys are in a dead end job. You hate it. I've been there. <laughs> okay. My last job was the kind of job where, and a lot of this was, a lot of this I take responsibility for. It's my attitude. Um, I didn't like the people that I worked with. And sometimes when that happens, what you do is just what I did with the dentist for years. You take it and you feed it and you become obsessed with how bad it is and then you make it so much worse than it is. I told several of you, I've said this before, about my job. Um, I would get up, you know, Sundays were the worst for me because every Sunday I got to about two o'clock in the afternoon and I would dread, just dread Mondays because I knew that Mondays we had to do a sales call and I had to talk with these people that all hated my guts and then I had to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with my boss and this boss that I had last time, and again, I'm mature enough to say, this is me, okay? He's good at what he does. He just has a different management style than I ever worked with, and I resented that. I resented somebody who was like, what are you gonna do this week? What'd you do last week? Blah, 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 and I was like, ah. All my other bosses were like, do your thing, and as long as you're producing, that's fine. 
This guy is like hands-on, procedure, blah, blah, blah. I had a horrible attitude about it and that made me obsess and misinterpret every email from him. Um, everything he said, I would obsess. What did he mean by that? He didn't like me. Is he going to fire me? This is what I did for two years, people. And a lot of that was on me. Now, some of that, yeah, I worked with a lot of douchebags there. And I'm going to put that out there. I'm not going to name names, but some of them still work there. And <laughs> whatever, I know you still don't like me. You can see that I don't care. Um, anyway, that was immature, and I'm sorry. Um, anyway, you can take something, and what you obsess about, just think of it, is that you're feeding it. It's like a plant that you're choosing to water and it will grow. So my obsession about the negative situation at work grew and grew and grew. Now that ended up being a good thing because it fueled me to go found this company, Fitfluential, and do something that I've never done before and not get a lot of sleep for two years. And no, I'm just kidding. Not kidding about sleep, but it's so worth it. So with the dentist, I had avoided the dentist for so many years and then I focused on all the bad things about the dentist how much I hated going to the dentist as a child, how much the first dentist when I moved to Chicago um, overcharged me, wanted to charge me like $20,000 and, you know, open up a line of credit with us and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I just need a cleaning. I mean, I mean, I don't, I, and I'm working at a job making $22,000 a year. I have 50 extra dollars after each paycheck. I can't make payments of $700 a month. Are you getting that I just graduated from college? Um, that was my first experience with the dentist here. Then I went to a dentist downtown Chicago. They did a root canal. Two years later, when I was working at Fidelity on a business trip, I had to have an emergency root canal because the first root canal screwed it up. Um, then another year and a half later, I had to get that redone again by a different dentist. And these are thousands of dollars that, that I paid out and, and horrible experiences. Do you know what it's like to be on a business trip and have to have emergency root canal surgery and pay cash up front because they wouldn't accept my insurance because it was Blue Cross Blue Shield, Illinois, and they were in D.C.? Another bad thing that happened in D.C., which makes me hate D.C. No offense if you live there. So then um, I'm going through my divorce, and I'm sitting in church one day. Swear to God, this is exactly what happened. Just like the Friday mint experience that knocked off a quarter of my molar. I'm sitting in church and I'm chewing my gum and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa. And in my gum is this tooth from the root canal. So I'm like, are you kidding me? So, and, and I have avoided the dentist getting this fixed for years. Finally went to the dentist. Now, let's be real. Was it flowers and sunshine and butterflies and all of that? No, but it was I got through it. Um, it was uncomfortable. I, I don't want to say, I think there's a big difference between being uncomfortable and being in pain. The whole time that I thought, oh wow, this is not feeling great. I'm thinking of what my mom's been through and what other people have been through. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> this just made me think of this because I got a text from Michael. Somebody, he heard something on the news the other day that some guy was golfing, some golfer. And he reached in, in a um, pond to get the ball out, and this alligator bit his arm off. Now, I hope that this is not like just a story that I'm going to look like an ass telling, but here I am sitting there getting this dental work done, and yeah, there's like this bad smell going on with the root canal and drilling and whatever, but realistically, it was more staggeringly uncomfortable. You know, you're just not comfortable. You have to have your jaw, and if you guys can see, I have a big mouth, figuratively speaking, but I don't have a big mouth realistically. I have small ears, small mouth. And so <laughs> these two people were trying to work in my mouth. And they're like, ah, there's not a lot of space in there. And I'm like, I, I, what are you going to do, break my jaw? I honestly thought that he was, and I'm joking because he did a great job. But I, I, I felt like I'm laying there in the chair and you have two people. And it really felt like this is what they were doing with my teeth, like, Argh! And then he's going in there, so the whole time it felt like this side of my jaw, they were doing work on this side, was pulled out to here, and this was up here. And then he's like taking a spatula and going in there like, Argh! and then he had like a clamp. So, I mean, I kept my eyes closed the whole time because I'm like, I don't want to see the tools that are going into my mouth right now because I think that would have made it a lot worse. So people, close your eyes. And next time I'm going to bring my headsets, like you said. But he would put something in. He's like, I need to have a little bit more space. So he put on a, you know, like a bigger thing to keep that up. Honest to God, if I have any residual 
pain or discomfort, it's in my jaw from having the jaw open that wide for that long. And that, when we got towards the end, aside from what I said yesterday, the number one thing that was bothering me about the experience was, first of all, when your mouth is up and they have this like little uh, bubble, those of you that have had a root canal, you know, there's a little, like a plastic bubble and they wrap your whole mouth in it. And then I guess they, I'm trying to think of how that works. They put it in your mouth so you're not gonna swallow any of the crap that they use. And then they must make a little hole for the actual teeth that they're working on. But <laughs> they're putting that in and I can feel these two people putting it in. They're like, ah, get that. And I'm just like, this is the single most bizarre thing ever. But the worst part about it is, you know, you're laying there, because I'm not gonna give you like a close up of my tonsils. You're laying there and you have this thing, and you know, I'm sure all of this apparatus on you. And you know, your mouth has to be open for, I'd say at least an hour and a half, if not that, if not more. From start to finish, from the numbing to whatever. And so your mouth is open, and the number one thing that bothered me was, you know, I got this fear about, I need to, I need to swallow, which really you don't. Um, but I was like, you know, if I'm gonna sit here and swallow, I close my mouth, right? So I'm there, and, and the, the thing that just kept making me panic was, <laughs> just, do you see, I'm still doing it. I'm still like thinking, I have to go back there on Monday. And then I kept, I was laying down there going, my nose is stuffy, am I gonna be able to swallow? And you know, the thing is, you feed one thing or the other. So I did really great when I was just like breathing in, they had the laughing gas on, and I was just focusing on keeping my arms, you know, like this and breathing in deep stomach breaths and just, you know, kind of focusing on something else. I'm definitely gonna wear my headset next time. But all that said, the second that I started to panic, I realized that I was panicking um, about swallowing. I had nothing I needed to swallow. I should Google that to see like how, if you really need to swallow X amount of times. It's like blinking, you don't need to blink, but we blink. But if somebody tells you, oh, you're not gonna be able to blink for five minutes, you're like, no, I need to blink, I, I need to blink, I blink all the time. No, you don't. But anyway, the, the times that I was there, and I think there were maybe about three to four times max during the whole procedure that I started to get a little panicky about the throat thing. And then what I did is, there were a couple, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm mentally panicking. So I'm like, Kelly, you're panicking. I said a prayer, <sighs> I took a deep breath. I could swallow the my mouth open. And I'm a ventriloquist. Okay, that's my 12 minute vlog today. Oh, I didn't even give you the greatest hits. Uh, I think I told you where he was number one, like, <laughs> We're gonna need to open this wider. Can you open any wider? He's like, I can't really get a good angle in there. These are things that I overheard. And then he was talking about something, which I don't wanna know what it is, but he's like, I'm gonna need a 23. No, I think I need a 24. And then he's like, you've got really long roots in there, Kelly. You've got great molars, but it's really tight in there, kid. There's not a lot of space. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means, but you're scaring me. <laughs> of course, I couldn't say that, but I wanted to go, no, I'm just kidding. That was very immature. I just wanted to do certain hand gestures like, because here's the thing, it's not about him saying that, what he said was nothing wrong. I just don't, like I do better, I don't know about you guys, I do better in a situation like that where I close my eyes, like if it, for, I don't know if you guys are like this, I can get all the shots in the world. A lot of men are scared of getting shots. If I see the needle going in, it freaks me out a lot more than just closing my eyes and looking the other way. So for me, it's better, like, if you have to focus on this, I'm just gonna close my eyes, and then I don't wanna hear that, because I don't wanna wonder, what's a 23? Is that, you know, is that a problem when you're saying you can't get in there, or are you just, you've had a long day and done too many root canals, and I'm annoying you because I made you stay late, which is very, very possible. Anyway, it was funny, I feel better. I'm just, like I said in the beginning of the video, what's funny is, like I'm trying to, I think I opened my jaw a little bit more that, that time, didn't I? Hold on. Hmm. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Sorry for eating on camera. But at least I didn't do what I did yesterday. When I was on my way home from the dentist, I ordered some mashed potatoes. I was trying to eat them and I was still numb on this side. And I looked in the mirror and there was still stuff like laying on my face and I didn't even feel it. That's awkward.